Hello, uh, we are going today for a, a more difficult episode. We are going to talk about theory. In Heckler's study, we are going to talk about the equations we can use. So when we have uh, we have our terrain ready and we have our uh, geometry ready and our boundary conditions ready, and then we go to this unsteady flow analysis window and we click in options up in the left. We can choose here the computation options and tolerances. This window shows up and we can go to the 2D flow options. And if we click in the equation set, we have these four options uh, available. We have the diffusion wave, we have the shallow water equation, original faster, we have the shallow water equation, stricter momentum, and the shallow water equation, local inertia. So when I do a first run of the model, I always use diffusion wave. Is faster and it's uh, more stable but then when I have more or less my model ready like a geometry that I like and it seems to be working then I will run it on shallow water equation it will take longer but it will give better results and you will see later the differences and if I have a more complicated model like for example a dam break then I will use the shallow water equation strict term momentum this last one I have never used it I know it uh, doesn't have the advection terms uh, but up to now, I I have not used it, so I cannot say. All these equations uh, have the mass conservation continuity. We will talk now about it. The first one, the diffusion wave, have the hydrostat hydrostatic pressure and the friction, and the other three, the shallow water equation, also have acceleration, Coriolis term, turbulent eddy viscosity. We also have other computational implementation, for example, for a uh, for bridge or for the dam break that uh, Hecrash uses also other equations. And about the mass conservation, uh, it just means that mass is neither created nor destroyed and that change in mass in a system balance with mass flow through the system boundaries. So to say uh, what comes in uh, minus what comes out is equal to the uh, difference within the system. In rest of the, each of uh, the grid cells will constitute a control volume. So each of our cells is one of these equations. And for incompressed fluids like water, it is more convenient to uh, state the uh, equation for volume instead of for mass. So we will talk about volume. Mm. Other flows such as precipitation, evaporation, infiltration, and seepage are considered boundary conditions and are denoted as trap. So those are also included in our mass conservation equation. So what is this momentum conservation? Is uh, we have the mass conservation and now the momentum conservation. Those are the equations for the momentum conservation and they are very long and seem very complicated, but are actually uh, quite simple. They come from the Newton's second law of motion or Navier-Stock equations. Relate changes in the velocity, so in U and V, acceleration to internal and external forces of the fluid. So what do we have here? We have the hydrostatic pressure, the viscosity, the friction, and the Coriolis effect. Uh, these equations are vertically averaged to yield to the solid water equations and venom. Why? Because we think water is mostly moving in this plane that we can depreciate what is happening in the set uh, um, axis so everything becomes more simple. Then about the diffusion wave approximation, these equations that we have here, we will ignore the acceleration terms and we will just keep that the bottom friction equals the pressure gradient. So, of course, we have taken away a lot of the computation that needed to be done. It would be a lot, of, a lot faster, but this is, a very, uh, this is a big simplification and in many cases this will not perform as well as we might want. And these are the cases. They are in the Hegras website and we are going to go through them quickly. So, in which cases diffusion wave uh, is not going to perform well and we need the shallow water equations are these ones. For example, when we have highly dynamic uh, flood waves, uh, yeah, so there's a flood coming and flow coming up and down or, uh, and then we need to perform this, we need the shallow water equation. 
when we have abrupt contra uh, contractions and expansions, so we have maybe a, a wide river and it comes narrow and wide again, then we need the, water the shallow water equations. If we have flat sloping river systems, because then the gradient is the, not the dominant force, so less, it says less than a feet per mile. It is equivalent at 1.89 uh, times 10 minus 4, so very, very, very small. Uh, then we need the shallow water equation. If we have tidally influenced conditions, the tide coming up and down, then we need the shallow water equation. If we have uh, general wave propagation modeling, for example, hydro peaking, so we have a turbine and we're opening, closing it, and that's creating dynamic waves. If we have super elevation around vents, we have a river and then a site is higher than the other one. Then if we want to simulate this, then we need the shallow water equation. If we want detailed velocities, if we have mixed flow regime, so supercritical and subcritical flow. No, this case, so it's a lot of things. So unless we have like a normal channel straight, and we just want to do something rough, then we can uh, use diffusion wave. Most of the cases, shallow water equations are the best to go. And as I said, I usually always use the original faster because they have improved a lot and it doesn't take so long. And yes, this to finish, I wanted to show this model where I actually computed differences uh, doing the same model with diffusion wave and the shallow water equation original faster. I, here we can see the difference in water surface elevation and we can see in green, for example, this channel that is quite straight and this channel is quite straight. The differences are less than five centimeters. This river is around 30 cubic meters per second, so this is not very big. But we can see in yellow that the difference come higher, so something like between uh, five centimeters and 10 centimeters and we can see that this might be because we have a bend. So it's a kind of a acceleration because we have changes in the velocity vector and then we get uh, bigger errors. And here in the right, we see the difference, but in velocity. And then those are quite higher actually because what it shows in red is between 10, centime um, 10 centimeters and 1.23 meter per second. So, yes, the velocities are become more of a problem. That's why it was also included here. If you want to tell velocities, then you might need to use the shallow water equation. And I hope that helps a lot. And I leave the link down there to the HEPGRAS website with these instructions. And yeah, have a nice day. Bye bye. <laughs>